Hello guys, Josiah here at easycaters.com and today I want to walk through a couple of new indicators that I'm adding to some of the sets on the website. Um, I've been working on this little um, script on the side uh, in my spare time while I'm kind of sitting out this little bear market that we're in or whatever we call this correction. Um, and so I wanted to sh go ahead and do a video and show you how it works and why I think it has some value. Um, if you look here, you see I've got a basically zigzag based indicator set up where it's showing these values at each swing point, at each extreme. And what this is, is the um, NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange new highs versus new lows. So it takes all the new highs from the NASDAQ and the NYSE, subtracts the new lows from the uh, NYSE and the NASDAQ, and these are 52 week highs and lows. And then it uh, you know, comes up with the difference and plots it in a bubble. And if this uh, value is extremely high, then it will color it a certain you know, brighter color. If it's extremely low, then it will color it a darker color. And so you can kind of see where um, there's some extreme you know, emotion coming into the market where a lot of people are panicking, that kind of thing. Uh, or if there's a lot of exuberance going on and that kind of thing. The thing that I noticed that I thought made this worth sharing is that it seems to be especially good at possibly finding market tops. It's really unusual and unusual to find a good tool for finding market tops. That um, it, It's usually much easier to find tools that are good at identifying bottoms. Uh, at least this is what I found. And it's really difficult to find things to uh, assist you with finding tops. But if you see here, um, this is good at identifying divergences at tops. So, um, you know, in the typical strong bull market, you're going to be seeing um, green, you know, both at the highs and the lows. You're going to see be seeing positive values both at the highs and the lows as we go up. Every now and then you'll see on a down move, of course, you'll see negative values as, you know, the whole market as a whole is, you know, is moving downward or more lows are being put in on a 52 week basis than high. And that's that's normal. But when you get up to a situation where you're making a new high in the market and you have a divergence where the breadth is not making uh, new highs uh, as a whole, then that can be interesting. And so this one ended up, you know, identifying that there'd be another leg down. This is probably just kind of a one-off thing that's not really that valuable. But uh, as you see here, the breadth starts weakening. Um, the the lo new lows get substantially higher and higher as we continue upward. And uh, so that's interesting. And then as we reach the top of the market here, you start to see that we're making uh, red bubbles are appearing at the tops of each new upward move. And so this is kind of a divergence saying the market is reaching new highs, but the, you know, underneath the surface, the uh, individual stocks are not by and large making new, uh, new highs. So this is a divergence. And, and so this is something where you can say, okay, we got one divergence here. We can put a stop under here, or we could, you know, wait for another, uh, divergence to show up, put a stop under there and get stopped out. You know, any of these would have been good opportunities to um, trail your stop loss and take your account out of the position, knowing that there was a bearish divergence happening at the new highs. So that's kind of an interesting tool. And um, I'll show you some more examples here of cases where this identified um, <clears throat> good times to uh, get cautious. So here was another time back in uh, the, let's see, this was 10-3 of 18 uh, before this little uh, uh, correction we had here. And you can see here we had, you know, we were making green even at the lows here. Then we started weakening. And then at a high, we got a weak signal. And that's where you really want to start paying attention. And so you could, at that point, have trail stop here or, you know, as – as the uh, market was was developing here, the bubble that you see here would have been following these 
candles down and you could have said okay well this is all turning negative so and we have a, already have a divergence negative at the high so maybe i want to trail here or here or here so you know you have multiple opportunities to say okay there's uh, a negative divergence showing here and this is a place that i want to tighten my stops um the little panic here or correction at uh in uh one let's see january of 2018 this one didn't really give us any good signals this was you know strong breadth throughout it just got too exuberant so this is a situation where you know this was an unrealistic move and so uh the breadth didn't really help us much there moving back toward 2016 though you can see that there was a good divergence that showed up here way before we dropped and spent a lot of time just going sideways and so you could have seen here as you know we had strong breadth strong breadth weakening a little bit weakening a little bit uh, getting weaker then we got a weak signal at the highs weak signal at the highs weak signal at the highs i mean this is a obvious place that you want to start trailing a stop um, so you get taken out or you know just cutting shares uh, even during intraday so that's you know another example that you can look at there's another example here as we you know started moving lower we got a divergent signal here at a high that would have been a good place to cut some shares if you wanted and so forth now this thinkorswim doesn't have uh, a lot of history of this particular st statistic so we can't go back and look at uh, values back uh, a long time through uh, through history but um, the examples that I've seen and the people that I've talked to show, seem to indicate that this could be a good um, uh, tool for evaluating the market strength. So anyway, I wanted to put this out there. I'm going to add this to um, the relative strength set as a freebie that you can, um, that anybody that's purchased the relative strength set in the past, you can just go back into the site, log in with your old credentials, uh, you know, reset your password if you've forgotten it, and you can get a hold of the new of this new tool as well. Uh, no, no charge for that. If you've, uh, if you don't own the relative strength set, then you can go purchase it and you'll get this and all the other relative strength tools that I provide in that set. And uh, the other things that I'm going to add to that are, so I, I like, I particularly like this zigzag based view because what is, what this is actually doing is looking at the market structure and it's saying during the course of the past swing here or the zigzag, between this bar and this bar, what was the average uh, number of net new highs versus new lows? And so for each bar, the average during this swing was 307. Uh, the average between these two points was 252 per bar. The average between these two points was 298 per bar, uh, negative 298 per bar, and so forth. So this is looking at the average per bar or per day net new highs versus lows. And there's a couple other settings you can use in here as well. Uh, I like the new 52 week highs versus lows, but there are other ratios and differences here that you can set it to and evaluate those as well. And of course you can change the zigzag settings to whatever you know sensitivity you want there so that you show more or less bubbles on the chart. And so you can kind of clean it up if that's too many bubbles for you. Uh, one other thing you can also do that I wanted to mention real quick is you can add a comparison chart because the relative strength set comes with a comparison uh, stock chart. So while you're looking at Apple, you can also look at the market down here and see how Apple behaved relative to the market. Well, what if you don't want to keep the bubbles on your main graph? Well, that's no big deal. You can just drag this down here. And instead of using the chart as the source, you can use a custom symbol as your source. And now I'll apply that, and now you can see, now we can look at Apple up here, at, whoop, Apple, as an example. And there you go. So you can see, uh, I've got an Apple chart up here. I've got the graph of the uh, S&P down at the bottom. And instead of the zigzags being plotted based on the Apple uh, chart price movement, it's being based on the comparison chart in, uh, indicator here and plotting the zigzags based on that. So that allows you to keep it in a, you know, keep your main chart clean and, you know, just look at the 
uh, breadth of the market on the market graph itself. So that might be useful to some of you. So I wanted to show you that. And then um, the other thing I'm going to provide is just one other uh, way of visualizing this, or actually two ways of visualizing this. Um, I'm going to provide a new highs and lows um, moving average. If you don't like the zigzags, you can visualize it with a moving average instead. And so this will take whatever symbol you want, and I can put this as Apple now, and I can plot it as a moving average. And so this will just every however many periods that you say, you know, you can tell every month plot a bubble or every week plot a bubble or whatever. And uh, I think weekly is probably a good one to go with. And then you can set a moving average of the number of new highs versus new lows. So like if you're looking at a weekly, you know, every week plotting a bubble, you could do the last five trading bars or candles uh, since there are five trading bars in a week. And uh, then it will it will calculate that average difference for the past five days and plot it on the moving average um, that you choose. And you can set the moving average here. So that's another visualization tool, a way to, to view the kind of current breadth of the market. And you can, again, you can move this down to um, the lower graph if you prefer that way. Just drag it down here and uh, we'd set it to be based on SPX instead of the charted symbol Apple. And you can see you can um, use both of those. The other thing that I wanted to show is the uh, actual graph here, the histogram. And this is, uh, let me clear some of this off here. And this is another way of viewing the same thing. Uh, this is essentially showing you the real time difference between the new highs and new lows. And so you can see when um, breadth gets really washed out, uh, when things get, you know, exuberant to the upside or, you know, panicky to the downside, that kind of thing. Uh, you can see these points in time where uh, panics have happened. These usually coincide with lows. And so the odds of a rebound are substantially higher at those points, at least for the short term. And then the same thing on the uh, on the bullish side. If you know things get too exuberant up here in the greens, then you know you're risking that uh, you're getting into a time where it's going to see a pullback, that kind of thing. So you can see that in real time here, um, and that's a good way of tracking the new highs versus new lows on a daily basis with this histogram. Um, and you can see you can. Uh, you know, in a uh, situation like this where we were in a bullish phase, but then the breadth started deteriorating as we were, you know, making this pullback here and getting into another pullback here, breadth really started deteriorating and then we started selling off. So that would have been a good opportunity again to, you know, put a stop in there and stop yourself out, trail, trail yourself out of the market. So that's an example of there. Um, here's, here's an example where breadth deteriorated um, at, as this first pullback was happening, so you didn't really see it in advance necessarily, but you could definitely have said, okay, breadth has deteriorated at this point. Maybe I want to try my stop under here, that kind of thing. So um, anyway, it's just another uh, tool for visualizing the same, the same uh, information, uh, but this is actually visualizing the per bar um, value instead of the, an average of the past X number of bars. So this will give you the raw uh, readout for the market on that particular day. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I'm going to add these three new scripts to the relative strength set as freebies. Old customers get that uh, get access to it for free. New customers get access to it with their purchase. And it's all done automatically on the website. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just shoot me an email at easycaters.com contact. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Thank you.